This tutorial explains how to remove a list element from a list object in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this tutorial, I will show you different examples and all of these examples are based on the example list that we can create with lines two to four of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new list object is appearing, which is called my list. And we can print this list to the bottom of the RStudio console by running line five of the code. And then you can see that our list contains three list elements, which are called A, B and C. And each of these list elements contains different values. So the list element A is a vector. The list element B contains the value 555 and the list element C contains the character string hello. So let's assume that we want to remove the second list element B from our list. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line seven. So in this line of code, I'm specifying the name of our list. So in this case, our list is called my list. And then I'm subsetting this list using square brackets. And within the square brackets, I'm specifying a minus sign in front of the index position of the list element that I want to remove. So in this case, I want to remove the second list element. And for that reason, I'm specifying minus two. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new list object, which is called my list one. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new list object is appearing, which is called my list one. And we can print this list to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line eight. And then you can see that we have created a new list which contains only the first and the third list elements of our input list. However, the second list element, the list element B has been removed. So in this first example, I have shown how to use square brackets and the minus operator to remove a list element. However, I want to show you different alternatives to this code. And in the second example, I'm using the null value to remove list elements. So in the first step in line 10 of the code, I'm duplicating our list object because I want to keep an original version of our list. So if you run line 10 of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new list object is appearing, which is called my list two. And at this point, this list contains exactly the same list elements as our input list. And then in the next step in line 11 of the code, I'm using square brackets on the left side of the assignment arrow. And I'm using these square brackets to subset our list once again, however, this time without the minus sign in front. And then I'm assigning to this the value null. So if you run line 11 of the code, our list is updated and you can see that by printing the list to the RStudio console by running line 12. And as you can see, we have created exactly the same list output as in the first example. However, this time we have used the null value. Another alternative to this is that we can use the names of our list elements to subset our list. And one way to do this is shown in line 14 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the names function. Then I'm using the in operator. And then I'm searching for all list elements where the name of the list element is not equal to the character B. So if you run line 14 of the code, you can see that another list object is appearing at the top right, which is called my list three. And if we print this list to the RStudio console, you can see that we have created another list object, which contains the list elements A and C. However, this time we have used the names of the list elements to subset our list. Another alternative to this is shown in line 17 of the code. So in this case, I'm again using the names function. However, then I'm using this bang and equal operator to check for all list elements that do not have the name B. So if you run line 17 of the code, another list is appearing at the top right, which is called my list four. And this list again contains only the list elements A and C. So in the previous examples, I have explained how to delete only one list element from a list. However, it's also possible to delete multiple list elements from a list. And this is what I want to show you in the next part of this tutorial, starting in line 20 of the code. 
So in this line of code, I'm again using the minus operator as in the first example. However, this time I'm also specifying a vector within the subsetting operator. And in this case, I'm subsetting our list based on the index positions two and three. So in other words, I'm removing the second and the third list elements from our list. And I'm storing the output of this in another list object, which is called my list five. So if you run 920 of the code, you can see that this list is appearing at the top right as well. And we can print this list to the RStudio console by running line 21. And then you can see that we have created a list subset, which contains only one list element, the list element A, and the list elements B and C have been removed. An alternative to this is shown in lines 23 to 25. So in line 23, I'm duplicating our list. And then in line 20, Four of the code, I'm again using the C function to specify a vector and I'm assigning to this the value null as I already did in the second example. However, this time I'm assigning the value null to two list elements. So if you run line 24 of the code, our list is updated and you can see that by printing the list to the RStudio console by running line 25. And then you can see that once again, we have created a list object which contains only the list element A. Alternatively to this, we can also use the names of our list objects to subset our list based on multiple list elements. As you can see in line 27, in this line of code, I'm using the names function as I already did in previous examples and the in operator. And this time I'm searching for all list elements that do not have the name B or C. So if you run line 27 of the code, another list is appearing at the top right, which is called my list seven. And we can print this list to the RStudio console by running line 28. And then you can see that once again, we have created a list object containing only one list element. However, this time we have used the names of the list elements to subset our list. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.